I'm at Etsy Security Conference and I'm very pleased to be joined by Mirko Kanasaveri, Technical Officer at Etsy, giving technical support to the 3GPP groups SA3 and SA5. Uh, Mirko, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, could you please start by just introducing uh, 3GPP uh, SA3 and what it covers? Well, in 3PP, as you know, it's a third generation partnership project. The 3PP was born uh, as a way of continuing or creating a standard after GSM. So the standard was 3G. It was a project, a global project, an initiative funded by uh, national, uh, by standardization bodies from uh, seven different countries. Countries like uh, uh, United States or Japan and China and so on. And after that, uh, we've been working for, since uh, at least uh, 1999 in creating a mobile standard, standards for uh, cellular telephony. Mm -hmm. So uh, in just a few words, very quickly, we'll cover all the mobility, all the uh, 5G, 4G, all the cellular telephony. Mm -hmm. So what we do in SA3 is to cover the security. We try to make uh, the mobile networks, um, networks more secure. And what is your role specifically um, here? As a technical officer in Etsy, I provide uh, technical and administrative support uh, to the work in SA3. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I will take uh, the minutes of the meeting. I make sure that they uh, follow the 3 PP rules. Uh, I'm sure that the chair and the delegates uh, also uh, follow the working procedures. Uh, I will act as a... Uh, I would say, um, well, any questions uh, may arise. Is it good mm -hmm. that we're doing? How, uh, if with a strong disagreement, uh, how do we get unstuck from here? Um, quality of the specification. I will mm -hmm. point out, okay, these requirements are a bit too ambiguous, so I don't know what you're saying here, so I can uh, help a bit in there. Or tell them just uh, not to use uh, certain words, uh, drafting rules, for example, uh, we don't use must in 3PP specifications okay. uh, because it's reserved for regulatory uh, bodies. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that's, that kind of things I have to remind them. Uh, prepare the meetings before the meetings uh, where they can uh, submit the documents. Uh, during the meeting, I will do as I said, uh, taking notes, uh, uh, helping them uh, where I can. And after the meeting, I'll just take uh, gather all the results and send them to the SA a technical body, which is a coordinating body where everything gets a stamp of approval, mm -hmm. or it will be the last step to, to uh, move all the approved contributions to the specifications. Okay, and how important are groups like SA3 for standardization and, and development in this area? Uh, you need to take into account that we do the security of the whole 3 mm -hmm. So 3 is divided into a lot of uh, technical groups that cover basically everything, the radio, uh, the services, the core network, uh, so and we have to do the security for all of them. Mm -hmm. So we not only have uh, like um, uh, working items that we cover ourselves, but uh, anybody can come to us and say, we need a security for this. Is it feasible? Uh, um, is this architecture good enough? Or from the security point of view, it's going to be a problem. So we are constantly busy because of that. Uh, yeah. It's always a lot of work. Yeah, because, um, like you say, security challenges are always developing, um, standardization legislation is always changing um, and upgrading. Um, so I imagine you're very busy kind of constantly, right? It's also a visibility, like uh, you see every day in the news, uh, there's uh, somebody hacked uh, 5G yeah. or 5G is not secure enough. Um, most of the time, it's really restricted, it's only a simulation or whatever, it's not really, uh, it, it gives a really bad image of what is really going on. So we need to be very careful with uh, uh, with issues, issues like uh, privacy, personal mm -hmm. data, yeah. and the fact that anybody can hack uh, your, your mobile uh, call uh, is really alarming. So it's a mm -hmm. really important group. Yeah, so you're dealing with quite important um quite interesting topics like you're saying data privacy that really affect everyone. Um, what are the meetings like? Uh, how many people participate and does it get heated at all um, when you're talking about these kinds of topics? Yeah, the, the first thing I, I, I saw when I entered there, I was surprised by the, the amount of people for such an important topic. Uh, uh, the, the group of people is relatively small. Like we're okay. talking about 45 people, 50 max. 
for something that covers basically all, all fields, all technical fields. Uh, that's one thing. The, the conversations get uh, really heated. Yeah. But uh, what I like, it's it, it's always respectful. Mm -hmm. So nobody loses their mind uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or nobody's shouting at each other. There might be some uh, loud voices, but in the end, uh, uh, what I like is that people represent the interests of the companies, but mm -hmm. outside the room, they're, they're just people. Yeah, so your role um, is a technical officer, but I guess a lot of what you do is actually working with people, um, trying to manage uh, potential conflict, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's a... Uh, there's a company and then there's a person as well. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, going back and forth between the person in the room and the back office at home. And uh, I think everybody knows that how 3PP works in the end and that they have to compromise in the end. At yeah. It. And uh, that's the beauty of, of 3PP. Uh, that's how we got here with a, a cellular telephony, why it's so successful mm -hmm. that we can use our mobile phones all over the world. And you were saying that you've been kind of um, with 3GPB for 10 years now. Yes. Um, has it changed much or has your role changed much since you joined? Uh, yeah, in the beginning, uh, as, a, as I was a newbie, was more like, okay, this is how we do the work here. Yeah. So uh, I tried to intervene. Uh, uh, working processes say that, no, no, but this is how we, we work here. <laughs> okay. Now it's more, okay, this is the way you should work and they listen to me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> when, there's a, when there is certain experience after quite a few years, they, they, uh, they know me better and they, they also know uh, that I'm more experienced and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I get to know them and I get to know when it's, it's okay what they're doing and when it's not okay. Mm -hmm. so when you they, need to intervene and yes, when, when you need uh, to handle After that. you know the same people after so long time, uh, they, uh, it's much easier to, mm -hmm. to, to talk. Okay, and what is, would you say is the best part of your job that you enjoy the most? Well, abs will be absolutely a multicultural environment. Yeah. Multinational environment. It's uh, it's kind of a multicultural shock to, to <laughs> get to intervene in a, in a meeting like this because uh, uh, there's clearly differences in the way of uh, working between Asians and Europeans and Americans, mm -hmm. and then you get to to learn how uh, you can work together, like for Asians. Uh, the term rejection is almost a taboo in the country. So in 3APP, you, although it's written in the procedures, you can say that contribution is rejected. We, we don't use it. Okay. We may use other terms like it's noted. Okay, we have listened and it's noted. Or it's not pursued, mm -hmm. which is actually a nicer term to say rejection. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so things like that. You you learn a lot about uh, talking to other mm -hmm. cultures other people and also the traveling is also very very nice like yeah. if you if you like traveling it's also really great to to get to know the cultures the gastronomy although you spend most of the part in the meeting room but uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you get the chance to to go out and, uh, and look at the world so yeah fantastic what would you say um to perhaps younger people earlier in their career who are looking to get into this kind of role within um, standardization support? Uh, well, I will say that uh, I will strongly encourage it because mm -hmm. uh, of the things I mentioned. If uh, you get to know, to open your world, to widen your uh, your mind because you get to interact with other cultures, uh, you get to know how, uh, how discussions can get to a compromise, uh, how uh, standards are made, how the, the beauty of uh, consensus uh, the things that uh, everybody in the end compromise, no mm -hmm. matter uh, where you come from, what company you're working for, or which country you, you are from. So it's uh, it's also the technical part. Like if you're really interested in the, um, all the technical uh, fields we have in 3PP, radio, core network, protocols, etc. You get to know, you get to intervene in very deep, very yeah. uh, technical discussions. And there's one side which would be okay, the interest of your company, but there's another side where you get to uh, analyze uh, in a very uh, much detail mm -hmm. if contributions are feasible or not. So uh, it's something that, where you learn a lot because, uh, as you know, we change from generation to generation. Yeah. They're already talking about 6G. Yeah. So uh, this never ends. Mm -hmm. So you, 
you never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, basically that. Yeah, and you get to have quite a direct impact, right, on uh, improving the security of yes. uh, our mobile networks, devices we use every day. And the best thing is that, yeah, you see the results in the outside world. Mm -hmm. Like all the all those hours, all these weeks uh, we spend discussing endlessly about endlessly about contributions. Then you see in a few years, okay, five G people are using it, and it's secure and it's a success. Mm -hmm. So you you tend to see the results of your work, and that's very uh, gives a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, I'm sure definitely. Um, and just to kind of finish, um, I was wondering if you have any thoughts, kind of, of the future of either your role or kind of developing standards like this. About my future. Uh, I think that the challenge is to to uh, catch up with the new technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned before 6G, which is now something of pure research, but very soon it will come yeah, come yeah. here. And then interaction with all the new technologies. Uh, for example, well, we have a vehicle to vehicle communications, yeah. which sounds uh, very futuristic, but uh, it's, it's going to come. Uh, maritime communications. Uh, uh, interaction with uh, satellite uh, mm -hmm. networks. So the main challenge is like we're not gonna work only with uh, your phone, your mobile phone. Uh, uh, it's gonna we're gonna going to have a, a lot of uh, devices like uh, Internet of Things. Uh, it's gonna expand to to a lot of uh, uh, new technologies. So what I see in my future is uh, uh, learning a lot about yeah. interaction with these new technologies. Mm -hmm. There are lots of exciting stuff to work on in the next few years, definitely. Yes, and everything will need uh, security and everything yep. will be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Will have to be very safe. <laughs> well, great. Thank you so much, Moko, for Thanks joining me and explaining a bit more about your role. Thank you.